Hello, my loves. I'm Ellie Frost. Thank you so much for being on my channel where we are talking about the multi-dimensional approach to rapidly and radically healing and transforming your life during and after narcissistic abuse. And what I want to talk about right now, because I'm kind of on this theme of the mountain story, but it was such a pivotal point in my life when I left my covert ex-narcissist, um, right? Well, after my life had been demolished for the second time and I was going through terrible PTSD and just like such a vile, malicious attack, right? That really just, again, it just knocked the wind out of my sails from, I'll say a minute, because in the great spectrum of my life, it's going to have been a minute, right? At the time, it felt like a disaster. But um, there was one moment in this, right? So I've just taken on extra financial equipment for us that I couldn't afford on my own at the time. Um, I just built a credit rating for the first time because I moved countries. You know, it took years to build a credit rating. It's actually quite hard to do that. I was really proud of it, which then got destroyed. <laughs> I'm still rebuilding that now, but we're, we're okay. Um, but there was a moment, right, because there were some things that he was supposed to um, help with, which obviously didn't honour, but the living expenses he was contributing to and we'd broken up i said it's enough and uh, he came around to try and give me i mean he was any he wasn't really it wasn't fair in how we were splitting it to be honest i had the majority of it and it, it wasn't a fair balance either but like i remember he was like oh i'll, I'll give you the money um towards uh, the place and i put my hand up like i teach you guys and i said at the time i don't need or want anything from you Right? At the time I said it, I mean, it was true to my soul, right? That's where I was going towards. But at the time I said it, financially, there's no way I could afford to do what I was doing without that assistance. None. I mean, at the time I wasn't able to, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't true in the current circumstances. It was true in the way my soul was screaming to me that this was now never going to be my reality again. I was suffering from PTSD badly. Uh, it, it was not a good time in my life. But it was a moment where I had said absolutely no more. Absolutely no more. That's the last time I will ever need or want anything from anyone like you. Right? Not because my circumstances had changed, because my energy was definite. Not knowing how it was going to work out, knowing full well I was going to go into an absolute storm, which I did. A storm that was like literally fighting for my survival and worried about survival things or, you know, working with my fear about that every day having to navigate my life in a way where I didn't, I wasn't mean to myself anymore, right? It's so easy in those situations to go, well, you should have just taken the money, right? You should have just taken the money. Why wouldn't I take the money? Because of what it meant. It was so easy when times looked like I wasn't going to make it or I was going through like really difficult things. You know what I mean? To say, well, you're an idiot, you, you, you know, to feel bad about myself. I stopped doing that. I started self-partnering like I teach you guys, right? Which was that I had my back. Yeah? I had my back. I didn't make myself an idiot anymore. I didn't get angry at myself. I did not shame myself. Yeah, I had my back. I was like, okay, <laughs> I don't know how we're going to do this either. It's all right. And okay, maybe you should. I mean, it was silly things that used to play on my mind. I'd like go and eat out or something and then not have, I don't know, it would be silly things that I would try and punish myself for and I would break the cycle over and over and over again. I self-partnered, I self-focused. I had my back, no matter what it looked like. And what I, start, what I knew already and what I knew for sure was the money was an energetic situation. My energy was everything. The external circumstances in this universe reflect our energetic state. That is manifestation, law of attraction, quantum physics, and the absolute damn truth. Not damn, but you know what I mean? It's the absolute truth. Your reality is shaped by your energy. Your energy being the combination of what you vibrate at energetically. Narcissists will always keep you in low vibrational states. 
your thoughts, beliefs and actions daily, right? Now you cannot easily, like I keep talking about, manifest when you're traumatized. But I knew my money is a direct, co is a direct reflection of my energy and my definite decisions. My um, quality of life, what's showing up in my life, the opportunities, what I'm attracting is my energy. My energy is what I can control as long as I don't let it be interfered with, right? Which is why I made that decision at a time when I was in chronic situations. So it was in crisis. During that time, it's what I talked about earlier, is when I started having the, I didn't have sovereign then. I had pieces that I'd been putting together as I'd been healing over the years, right, through these cycles. And I, w I wrote Journey to Sovereignty because that was the journey I was on. Then I decided to become sovereign because I'd learned different tools to put it together, right? My transition from that time, right, until now wasn't that long ago. But the transformation is extreme. Like, it, it, if I could show, <laughs> it's extreme. It is so night and day, like it is unreal in that sense. It's absolutely unbelievable in terms of like what I've manifested in my life, how it's changed, <laughs> where I live, without any possible, like against all the odds. With that kind of credit rate, how did I even get this apartment? I live in a beautiful apartment. Like how on earth did it happen? And it's... <laughs> There were so many things. How on earth did it happen? Because of my definite energy. I understood money differently. I, I, I wanted to be sovereign. I had to understand the energy of money. I had to understand the energy of power. I had to understand the energy of sovereignty, right? And I did it in actually pr really fast time. If you actually looked at it, I didn't know at the time how long the disaster, the storm, the absolute chaos, the horrible... Some of my life, I was desperate. Like, it was just... I was in despair. It was so bad for me at certain points. I was so low. Um, I was so low and I was ill, <laughs> you know? At certain points, like, the only... I mean, I was, had the divine, but, like, I was at the point where it was like, you know, if I just died right now, no one would even know. Like, it was just bad. I was on my own with it all. I was in my own with all my pain. I was in my own with all my healing. I had absolutely no one apart from my spiritual connection. But when I look back at it, I mean, it was revolutionary in terms of like, how do you, it's impossible. How did I go from that to this? I put, I put in crisis when my circumstances were so urgent you know, if you want to, I had to learn safety and stability. I had to learn to slow it down. I had to learn not to be ruled by time. I teach this in Money Magic. I had to learn, right? To be the master of my own energy. And it, from that state, I started doing different things. And I had the energy and I had the expansion. It was all an energetic game. I promise you it is, my loves. It is. It is so dramatically, right? So in my sovereign program, it's like six more. Well, there's a warm up we've done already. But like, you know, it's six modules over six weeks. You can completely change your state in six weeks, even quicker than that, because people start seeing things straight away. But it's because I had to transform in such, I was under such pressure. But I realized that if I could do it under such intensity, right, I wasn't given the comfort of like, well, you could just stay in this house for the next 10 years. And you, you know what I mean? If you heal, you heal and take a step every day. I was under the pressure of like, you've got to fight for your life right now because like one, you're sick. Two, you've got nowhere to live. Right? If you don't bring money in, you're fucked. You're off the planet. You know, and I've got my, cu my guys, my dogs. Like, it, I'm not saying pressure made this happen. It didn't. I'd already done a lot of work up until this point to heal from the last narcissistic cycle, right? But I am saying that what I knew about being able to use this and then when I put it together in the sequence I have, it, it blew my mind. Because if I could do it under those conditions, I'm telling you, you can do it in yours. Because for most of you, you won't be under the pressure that I was under and it worked for me under that kind of pressure that's what I'm saying if I could transform under that kind of pressure then what can I do with it with other people because like they're not going to be under that level of pressure they're going to be under PTSD they're going to be under stress but not the level of pressure I was under with all those things right that's why I'm saying like it's such an interesting thing to me but what the core of it was it was my energy that was everything that's why I'm telling you your energy is everything your energy is affecting the outside circumstances don't give the circumstances power over you I took power over them not knowing how on earth I was going to do it when I said I do not need or want anything from you I had no idea what that meant but I knew I was stronger than the last cycle of narcissistic abuse right 
There was one time I left the last narcissist. I, I couldn't get out. I didn't have a car at the time, right? Um, but like, <laughs> just going and thinking, I mean, there was nowhere for me to go. I wasn't energetically strong enough to manifest, right? When I get my energy strong, I could manifest. I manifested, whether it was, you know, I manifested and I manifested and I manifested because my energy was the whole thing, not the external circumstances. So honestly, I know that some of you are in situations where you're like a gold, that's how I felt, like a goldfish bowl. I'm in a goldfish bowl, same shit, different day. I'm spinning around. Or I felt like a fly. You know, like flies hit against the wall. Everything I tried wasn't working. Every time I tried to get away, every move I made, I felt like a fly banging against the wall. I stopped trying to fix it from the external. I went way internal. I solved it all energetically by raising my own energy, by repairing my energy field, by making it resilient, by making it strong, then I could start manifesting because my heart expanded again. And you manifest from your heart a lot, by the way, most powerfully. But when your heart's broken and shallow, that's why they always try and break my heart. Like, that's why they always come at my heart because, like, they know I will, I will feel it, right? But when your heart is back intact, right, and you're strong enough, it's going to hurt sometimes and be a bit bruised. That's okay. We're good with that. You can manifest. You get your heart behind something, you're going to manifest it quicker. I had my heart with my dog. That's why my dogs, you know, we were very strong together. And I also learn a lot from my animals. Like we talk about our animals a lot, and I'm posting the pictures because you said about it. I looked at my dogs many times, right, as teachers. And, like, I loved the way every day, right, they look at me. Like, they have no doubt in their mind that I'm going to provide for them, I'm going to walk them, I'm going to feed them, I'm going to house them, I'm going to take care of them. They don't ever worry they don't ever doubt me. They never, ever question it. Every meal they have, it's like the first best meal they've ever had. They're so excited and they eat it and they're grateful. Every walk we go on, they're like, oh, you know, this is the best walk ever. They're never like resentful. They're never uh, ungrateful. They never, you know, when I, I cook for them sometimes too, but like they're never like, oh, well, we were living in a really nice place and now we're driving around and going from place to place. They don't care. They, they don't care. They trust me. They, they're energy and we always have fun. And I just started living that life. I just started living that no matter what. I started energizing that no matter what. I could have it there. You know what I mean? You have to be brave enough to get the people out of your life that are poisoning your life. They contaminate you. I could not manifest in the same way with that narcissist. And honestly, like, even with the person I told you about earlier that I got rid of in my life, which did hurt me recently because it was a betrayal. It was a big betrayal. And she knew it. And she knew she was uh, trying to damage me um, emotionally and financially because it was that kind of betrayal. All the same, um, not dealing with those people gives me my energy back. It's the best thing I've ever done. It's not a loss. In fact, I'm going to gain loads more because in my flow, my energy flows. In my flow, miracles happen. In my flow, I'm available. Honestly, that's what I want to teach you. Like, you're available for so much more. There were times in those situations I didn't even think my life was worth living. I didn't even want it if it was going to be my life. What a waste that would have been. It would have been such a waste. If you're in that position now, I need to tell you, right, you just need to understand what I'm saying to you and listen to the tools I've got on here. When you strengthen your energy, something shifts. You haven't got to force happiness. You haven't got to try and be what you're not. You're okay if you're sad. You're okay if you're depressed. Don't deny your reality. Part of what I teach all the time and in Sovereign is self-partner. If I'm depressed, I go, okay, Ellie, you're sad. This week, I told you, I cried in the grocery store. I was upset about this betrayal in this relationship and I was grieving. I didn't go, I need to stop grieving. I need to be over this. I've got to like build a business. And I was like, she's grieving. Yeah, I parent myself. I partner myself. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, sweetheart. Let's go home. Right? What do you want to do? You're just going to cry and eat a pizza and eat a lot of ice cream right now. Okay, that's great. And when we don't fit into our jeans for the next week, we're okay with it. I don't beat myself up anymore. I'm like, that's cool. I rest my tea on my muffin top for now. Yeah? We had a hard time. We're doing good. You know? It's self-partnering. I don't try and change where I'm at. I don't beat myself up anymore. I say I don't shame myself. If you can get out of this um, stuff and back, and then you get back in. You see, we're so closed in our hearts. That's why you're not manifesting. You don't dream when you're so um, helped. That's why I love the work we do. I do with people because once I get them strong, you can open your heart. And when you open your heart, you manifest your dreams. But you won't do it when you're closed and protected. And you shouldn't either because, like I said earlier on the earlier one about manifesting, like you'll manifest if you do it when you're really traumatized. You bring good stuff in sometimes, but then there's a big crash because you can't hold on to it. We don't want that. I don't want that for you. I went through that and it was terrible. 
when I put my hand out and said, I do not need or want anything from you, that was like, now what? I hadn't thought that through, or I kind of had, but like there was no answer, so I wasn't going to sit, you know what I mean? I was going to have to fucking find out. But by being willing to do that, right? And I'm telling you, my processes are so fast. I, I cannot put the two together sometimes when I sit and look at my life. I can't put it together. Sometimes I get scared and think, oh, can I still sustain it? Will I go down the old rabbit holes? I do feel like that sometimes. And I just have to manage myself and work with myself and be emotionally intelligent about it. It's natural that I would feel that I'm still a human being. Yeah? But the other times, I'm just like, how could you do those two things? How could you have done so much since then? How? It doesn't even make sense. You would never, ever think, I, I, I wouldn't. It wasn't that long ago when I was living in hotels and wondering if I'd ever be able to get an apartment. I've got a really bad credit rating, let alone one that I loved, that ticked all my boxes. That I couldn't even, I, I'd already got denied from one. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Except it doesn't have to make sense because I fucking manifested it from the, well, God manifested it, God gave it to me. It's a divine, it's a blessing. It's something that I'm working with the universe for. It's not meant to be logical, it's energetic. Yeah? What makes sense is predictable just from what you know. What is able to come through manifesting is possible not predictable beyond your current reality and that's why it's so good and that's why you've got to learn how to do it because it's, it's beyond that but we can't do it traumatized so if you can join sovereign please do module one drops tomorrow there's a bit of catch-up warm-up to do that are important tools you can still carry on joining this week um, i really recommend you get in there i want to share this so much with you because i swear to you i'm talking to me Literally not that long ago when I was in that cabin, I didn't know what I know now. If I'd have known it, it wouldn't have taken me like over a year to get on my feet. It would have taken me six or eight weeks. I would have been a different fucking human. That's what I know. I'm not joking when I say it. I would have been a different human in about six weeks. That's mind blowing to me when I actually, actually think about it, which is what I'm actually thinking about right now. When I'm actually acknowledging it, like it doesn't even it doesn't, I can't even make sense of it. It's just the work that I teach you. Because we clear the trauma and I'm very good at teaching manifestation. I taught manifestation way before any of this, right? When you put these two together in the way that I know how to do it and you move the energy, I'm not joking of what can open up in your life. It's ridiculous. It doesn't make sense. It's not meant to make sense, right? It's energetics. I love you. Lots of love. I'll speak to you soon.